Good evening, everyone. I'm Rod Black, and welcome to the 1993 Sun Life Skate Canada International. Tonight, the women's technical program and the men's free skate. It is a sold-out crowd tonight, jammed to the ceiling. And one of the reasons, of course, is because they've come to watch the crowd magnet, one of the most well-known Canadians and well-known skaters in the world, Kurt Browning, who last night debuted his new short program, and judging by the rave reviews, uh, they're still picking up flowers around here today. Browning last night, first after the technical program. Stephen Cousins, second uh, from Great Britain, and Oleg Tatarov from Russia, sitting third as we head to the free skate to come later tonight. Why all the fuss right now about skating so early in the season? It's only November, but if you remember, just down the road, 98 days and counting, we will be in Lillehammer for the Winter Olympics, and already people are watching, including Elvis Stoiko. He's here tonight watching, not skating, scouting, looking ahead to Lillehammer and watching some of his competitors, like Kurt Browning, number one in the world, number two in the world. Browning and Stoiko have to be considered early favorites on the road to Lillehammer. Alexei Ermanov, another name we'll be watching on the way to Lillehammer from Russia. Brian Boitano, the reinstated pro in the 88 Olympic champion and the 92 Olympic champion, Viktor Petrenko. Those are just some of the men who will line up at the starting post in Hammer, Norway. One of the names conspicuously missing from that list, Brian Orser. He won't be skating because he's working with us. Let's go to him now with Debbie Wilkes. There's certainly five great names in the history books of figure skating, and Brian, Rod's absolutely right. Yours is the only one that's missing. That's very flattering, but I'm very content standing right here on the sideline. What, how do you see the talent stacking up for Lillehammer, looking at those five names? Well, what we have, we have the two camps. We have the professional camp, and we have the amateur camp. The amateur camp uh, are maintaining a fantastic standard of technical elements, and they're, they're skating brilliant. And then we have the professionals, who have had these years of professional training, and experiencing the, the entertainment business. So putting all this together, we have this incredible lineup, one that I don't remember ever seeing such a great lineup ever. And it's a great lineup here for the men's final two at Skate Canada. It should be a great night. Guaranteed to be a wonderful night. Hello, Kurt Browning, just arriving in the Ottawa Civic Center. We think, here he comes. Kurt Browning will be on ice a little later for the men's free skate, Karen Preston of Toronto is on ice now. In a moment, we will have her technical program, the women's event to begin the night. Stay tuned, folks. We've got a great one for you. Karen Preston. The first time Karen Preston ever competed in an international competition was right here at the Ottawa Civic Center on the same ice surface. She said she remembers entering the rink area. She had some friends who were also competing in the event. She saw the TV lights and she ran screaming back into the change room. Well, she's come a long way since then. Has she ever? Karen opens with her most difficult element in the technical program. That's a triple flip, double toe loop combination. a slight touchdown with their free foot on the landing of the triple flip. We'll have to wait for a replay on that one.
Jose Schwinard has been the champion twice. Now they are training together at the Granite Club. We'll be back with her marks in just a moment. Some questionable problems on the combination, whether the triple flip actually worked. Was it two-footed? Let's have a look. We'll see it right here on the landing of this first jump, the triple flip, one, two, three revolutions in the air, a slight touchdown. It happened so fast. But she came back at the end of the program, did a perfect double axle, nice height, and a really nice flow coming out of it. Right there. Required elements, Mark. Quite consistent. She was enjoying herself tonight. She seemed in control, happy and comfortable. The presentation marks are even higher. And skating first, it's tough. It is tough. Karen Preston of Canada, good start. On the ice, residing in Moscow but born in St. Petersburg is Olga Markova. She was fourth in the Russian Nationals earlier this year. Her big dream is to make it to the World Championships. Markova of Russia. Very dramatic. Crowd presence. We have been talking a lot about Lillehammer over the course of this weekend. For Olga, it's an impossibility because no Russian competitor in the women's event finished in the top 24 at Worlds last year. There will be no woman competitor at the Olympics. Here we have the triple lutz combination. Triple lutz, quite a bit forward, down with the hands, but she still maintained the double toe loop. 
The biggest deduction comes if the second jump is eliminated. Nice flow going in, nice flow coming out, double axle, and a nice landing. The marks for the North Pool of Orca Markova, four required elements, Ole Delimon Hiking. Very often, if a skater makes a mistake going into the combination, and the first jump particularly, the natural instinct is to stop. So it takes hours and hours of training the combination to make sure it don't ever leave the second jump out no matter what. Still, she suffered a fair deduction because of the touchdown on the first jump of the combination. Mark for presentation. That's the theatrical nature of the performance. Look at the 5-7 from the Canadian judge. Keep a running tally of the marks, everyone at home, and, and look along vertical lines. Consider each mark from one judge and determine which skater got the highest mark from that judge, and they'll be the winner on that judge's card. While the women are on ice, the men getting ready backstage. They're up later tonight. Kurt Browning, Marcus Christensen, getting ready. Susan Humphreys from Canada. She is now living in Edmonton, Alberta, but her real place of birth is Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan. Done a fair amount of training in Vancouver. She says this is her dress rehearsal for Canadians. Susan Humphreys has a dream of making Canada's Olympic team. She says that it'd be nice if it could be this year, but she knows she has a lot of skaters to unseat before that can happen. One of them, Karen Preston, the other, Jose Schmenard. Tough competition. Good competition, though. She is still very young. 
only 18 years of age, so she's got time to make it to the Olympics. Exactly, that was the double lap, so nice and easy. The most important element in the, in the technical program is the combination. She chose a triple flip into a double toe loop. Very nice. When the skater lands with a smile on their face, you know they've decided before they even took off, I'm going to do this one. She is coached by Christy Ness at the Royal Glenora Club in Edmonton. Required elements. And for presentation, a good set of marks, some nice high ones for Susan Humphreys, debuting her technical program. And watching his former clubmate from Royal Glenora, Kurt Browning, backstage. Getting ready? More women's technical program and still the men's free skate to come tonight in Ottawa. Christina Zaka with a very strong performance. She has been impressing me actually all week long during practice. She's been nailing the triple jump. And in fact, in the free program, she has a triple-triple combination. Like this triple flip double toe loop in the very first element in the technical program.
she liked what she saw. The Mark IV Le Nocturne of Christina Sacco for required element before Le Delimont Le Key. Sometimes when you feel you've done a good skate, you want to be assured of that, but you're afraid to look at the marks. The judges putting their thoughts into five, marks. Four, five, two, five, one, five, three, five, two, five, two, five, two, five, four, and there five, they are. Four. Very thank good. Thank you, thank Technically, thank she was one of the best thank skaters. Thank it was, it was quite good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. She's very Vermont young, going to be turning 15 next month. Five, four, five, two, five, one, five, three, five, two, five, three. And good five, presentation three, five, marks, five, too. Five, four. A great start to the year for Christina Sacco of Hungary. The next competitor, La Prochaine Concurrent de la Chine from China, Zhu Chen. Backstage, Kurt Browning, and one of our floor directors, as a matter of fact. We'll see Kurt and more from the women's technical program at the 93 Sun Life Skate Canada International after this. Born in Wimbledon, near London, Charlene Von Sayer of Great Britain. She's now living in Greenwich, Connecticut, actually living in Toronto and training with Kurt Browning and the rest of Louis Song's gang at the Granite Club. She continues to find exciting things on the ice. Some of the skaters have been complaining about pieces of paint falling from the roof. Also, sometimes sequins from some of the costumes can fall off as well. So her main objective right now is just to Charlene refocus and get back into this technical program mode.
Four of Charlene's favorite fans are her four dogs, two beagles and a basset hound and a white German shepherd, and I bet you they're watching at home. Here's the triple Lutz combination. She had a slight touchdown on the triple Lutz, so there'll be a small deduction for that. The marks four. They you mean she's landing on two feet. Exactly. Four required elements. Will they give him all they keep? Beautiful position in the layback spin. It was very fast and nicely centered, spinning in one spot. And then she goes into this different position here where she pulls everything nice and close. Very unique. Anytime in a spin where there is a change of position, it makes it much harder. Your balance point changes, and the judges are looking at that one spot on the ice to see, can you stay there? Charlene is coached also by her mother, who was a former figure skater from Germany. She was German junior champion in the 60s and second at the World Professionals. They both agree that there's good and bad points to having coaching right in the family. But they try to separate the two jobs. Seems to be an inordinate amount of time to get the marks out. After the first skater, usually marks tickety boop right along. They do the averaging after the first skater, and sometimes that can take a fair amount of time. Looks like they're coming up very soon. She'll have the two deductions, though, one for the, for the two-foot landing on the triple lutz and also for stepping out of the double axle. Five, zero, four, six, four, six, four, nine, and finally, the marks four, for Charlene Von Sayer of Great Britain, five, two, required five, element one. You called that one very well, Brian. I'm not sure if I agree with the 4.3, though. Thank you. Thank you. Marks for presentation, pour la présentation. And good marks for presentation make Charlene feel a little better. Rightfully so, absolutely. A week ago in Hammer, Norway, Jose Schwinard finishing second, a silver medal at the Pirouette competition. And of course, that will be where the Winter Olympic Games competition takes place. Nancy Kerrigan finishing first, and Lu Chen, who we'll see in a moment, finishing third. Tell us about Hammer and, and what you thought about the site where you will be most probably in February. Well, it was a little village which I think will be very good for the Olympics because um, it won't be as busy like a big city and it'll be easier to get to the rink because we were very, I think we're very close to the rink because we weren't living in the, where we will be in the dorm but um, actually everything is pretty close so it's the facilities are really good and skating in the same ring that I'll be skating in February I think it was a good feeling and skating well it was more even more positive um, people are very friendly over there I think we'll enjoy a week later you're here a Canadian champion watching uh, your club mate now Karen Preston and the rest at Skate Canada you've been here before it must be nice to watch once in a while yes it's nice it's it is nice to watch um, Actually, when you're competing, you don't really have time to watch the other ones, especially if, you skated, if you're skating at the end. Um, and you're, like, concentrating on, like, so much on yourself, and you don't really want... Because it doesn't work for me competing against the other ones, so I have to... Um, compa uh, like, competing against my own performance, mm -hmm. last performance. So uh, it's nice to, sometimes to sit down and watch and, like, I think, um, appreciate the others, like, skating. Well, uh, enjoy tonight and uh, the rest of the time off for a while anyways. We'll see you in Edmonton in January for the Canadians. Thank you, Jose. You're welcome. Jose Schwenard, the Canadian women's skating champion. Now let's return to the women's technical program and our final competitor.
will just be one continuous mo movement. It was almost as if Claire de Lune was ready for her. It was almost mesmerizing, me, actually. It's strange. The jumps didn't stand out. They were part of what made the program successful, but there was so much attention to the rest of the detail. Exactly. Every single step, it was continuous movement all the way through. She'd been having trouble with the combination and warm-up, but it came off beautifully. It certainly did. She seemed to have a lot more flow going into it in the actual program. This is one of the better ones she's done all week, actually. Double axle one, two and a half revolutions in the air. Nice smooth landing and a real nice exit out of it. She had such precision with her feet. They, they moved, the way a skater calls it is very crisp was neat and technically excellent, but the upper part of her body was in some other stage, just floating. Look at the mark! First place marks all across, is my guess. The marks for presentation for la presentation. And these ones can only be better. And they are. A couple of five eights in there. Well deserved. First place marks for Lu Chen of China. And so the leaders after the technical program, Lu Chen of China, third last week in Hammer at the Pirouette, and leading after the technical program, Karen Preston of Toronto, first to skate today, but she sits second behind Lu Chen. Olga Markova of Russia is third, heading into tomorrow's free skate. We'll have it here on CTV. Check your local listings. Lu Chen, of course, as I mentioned, third, the bronze medal behind Jose Schwenard and Nancy Kerrigan in the Olympic City last week, looking to become, in a few months, the first skater from China to win an Olympic medal. She's the leader heading into the free skate. This is the men's dressing room. No movement yet, but they'll soon be coming out. And we'll be soon going to the men's free skate tonight in Ottawa. Stay with us. The 1993 Sun Life Skate Canada International continues in a moment. 